um, on this before we jump into that. So I'm really excited to be get coming back to the full council with this, um, this long overdue ordinance change regarding mandatory rental weatherization. Um, in Vermont, we've really, for a long time now, we've believed in the importance of energy efficiency as a way to reduce negative environmental impacts and address the climate crisis, to improve health and quality of life, to save Vermonters money, and to build our local economy. Um, weatherization is one of the most important examples of energy efficiency that we have, and it's really about reducing the amount of air leakage in a building by, by sealing up cracks and improving insulation and creating a building envelope that holds in as much, as much heat as possible. Um, for owner-occupied housing, there's a pretty straightforward economic incentive for weatherization, which is just the savings are the, the savings annually on heating bills are greater than what you would spend on the improvements, especially when, as Councillor Pine referenced, when the financing is favorable and you can spread it out over time, and especially with the incentives that we have available in Vermont. Um, but for rental units it's a lot less straightforward because the property owner is the one paying for those improvements, um, but it's the tenant usually who's paying the utility bills and it, it would be the tenant receiving those savings. So that's a problem that we've recognized as a city for at least you know, 25 years. And as Councillor Busher referenced, we tried to start addressing that issue um, with this time of sale ordinance because we realized that the incentives alone aren't enough and that we actually do need to compel um, landlords to do this work. So we passed this time of sale. There's a lot of information we don't know. Um, I don't recall who it was that had said it, but there are such things as in separation. Where are we going to house the new staff? Where are we going to, that uh, we don't have space for right now and we have not had a department for in years um, while we have had uh, we've had a manager. We've had a finance director. Uh, we haven't had a. We haven't had an assessor. We haven't had a police department in years. Um, we have not had. Uh, we haven't had our clerk back in a few years. We haven't had an IT department. We had that previously contracted out. We had various departments that we would have to then hire staff for and put them somewhere. We don't know where they would go. Um, in terms of separation, we have a whole host of agreements that exist with the town. What would that look like and what would happen with those? Uh, I know we've received a few emails on dissolution. That's something that I didn't hear mentioned tonight that has a whole host of other questions uh, with dissolution, such as what do we do with everything the village owns? And when I say everything, I mean buildings, I mean equipment, I mean what do we do about the staff that we currently have? Are they just let go? Um, how does that work? Uh, our wastewater treatment plant, which serves Essex, Williston, and, and uh, Essex Junction, the town of Essex and Williston. What happens in dissolution with that? Also then with the agreements. Um, so I would I say all that to say that there's a lot we don't know and that there's a lot that uh, I would agree with an earlier commenter on. We need to do some research on this. Um, 